Hello there. My name is Tino. In the last video, we spoke about how open banking works through APIs and how third-party providers can connect with banks using these means to securely access financial data with users' consent. In this video, we'll be talking about the importance of data privacy to open banking. I'll tell you what happens when you're prompted to share financial data. You'll probably be prompted to click on a link or a button to connect a financial account and give consent for your data to be shared. When you do this, you'll be shown a consent screen for which you should read carefully before you proceed. As you move on, you'll be shown a list of banks from which you should select the account you would like to connect with. You will then be prompted to type in your login credentials. If these credentials are correct, your account should be connected successfully and data shared with the business. As a user, you may be concerned about this process, especially if this is the first time you are sharing your financial data this way. This concern is valid, and in this video, I will tell you more about how you can ensure that this process and your financial data are secure. The question in your mind now is probably, is open banking secure? Ideally, the answer is yes. Just like all innovative solutions in financial services, open banking and its benefits can be compromised by bad actors. This is why it's important for best security practices to be applied on every end. Security on the bank's end, security on your end, security on the third provider party's end, and security on the end of the bank that prompted you to share financial data. As the user, because you're in control, and your content is the centerpiece for the process of financial data sharing. This means that open banking is more secure than most other forms of financial data sharing, like screen scraping. The ways in which the security of open banking practices are ensured include governing laws set up by countries Apex Bank for open banking, data regulations globally like GDPR, and more region-specific data protection practices, bank API security, and ensuring that only legitimate third-party providers can connect to them. On your part, you have to ensure that you trust the business that has prompted you to share your financial data, ensure that you read through the consent page before you log in, make sure that no one can see you typing your login credentials and that you have multi-factor authentication set up. You also have to ensure that there are ways to revoke your financial data if you need it. Now, let's talk about some of the things we have heard about open banking and data privacy. Number one, customer data can be accessed without consent. This is not true. Open banking security protocols makes it so that all the control is in your hands as users. This means that data cannot be accessed from the banks by third-party providers without consent from the user. Also, third-party providers make it very clear to both you and the bank what data they would like to have access to. Anything outside of that scope will not be made accessible to the provider. Number two, funds can be compromised when data is shared. Because open banking is new and innovative, it is subject to a lot of regulation. By following these regulations, open banking providers are just as secure as your bank. In addition, secure information like your password and login details is encrypted, which means these details are encoded so no one else can view them. Open banking is the future of financial services and maintaining security of everyday users like you and me is important. I hope you learned something new and useful today. Thank you for watching.